The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Festool. Faster, easier, smarter. And by Powermatic, the gold standard since 1921. Welcome to the first annual Woodworker Safety Week. So I bet you're wondering why we're doing this. Well, basically, I think we all, a lot of us think we're safe, you know, in general, we don't really go into our shop thinking we're gonna get hurt that day. If we did, we probably wouldn't do it. Uh, but I think after a few years of experience, a lot of people can start to get complacent because you feel more comfortable around these things. Not that you should fear them, but I think we do need to remind ourselves once in a while what can happen by hearing other people's stories and relating stories back and forth with each other so we can learn from each other's experiences. And hopefully when it's all said and done with the whole entire blogging community and internet woodworking community involved, we can all walk away from this with some really important reminders and some tips and maybe you know some things we just never heard uh, that make a, a particular process or procedure safer for us in our workshops. Now keep in mind, every video that I'm putting out, the videos from Fine Woodworking, as well as all of the videos and content you're gonna get from all of the blogs, none of it is really meant to be a comprehensive review of safety. That stuff is out there if you're really looking for it. What I'm hoping is that we'll be able to relay personal experiences and little tidbits of information that you might not otherwise get. And it's gonna allow us to spend one entire week just focusing on safety. It's just kind of like a refresher course. And then after that, we can apply all those things to our everyday uh, workflow in the shop. Now, I like to apply a sort of common sense approach to woodworking safety. We have some senses, you know, we have five senses and we need to protect those senses with everything that we do in the shop, right? So, of course, we're making a lot of dust. You know, I, a long time ago, upgraded from the very simple dust mask to a respirator. This gives me everything that I need when it comes to finishing. So there's chemical uh, filtering here, as well as particulate filtration for the small dust. But I don't know if anyone's ever seen on the live cam, but I wear this constantly. I'm a little bit paranoid about uh, lung problems, so this is always on. Of course, you got to protect your hearing, right? Okay, if you want to listen to music, they have great headphones that have either radios built in or uh, you could plug an MP3 player in there. It's just a great way to go about your day, keep your energy up with the music, but still protect your ears from the dangerous sound levels that just about every machine in here is going to produce. And if you don't like these, there's always the little earplugs. Of course, you're touching a lot of dangerous stuff, our chemicals that we deal with all the time. So uh, a good selection of gloves in the shop is absolutely essential. Eye protection. Okay, for me, if it's not within arm's reach, I tend to forget to use them, or maybe it's just I'm too lazy to go and walk across the room. So I believe this was from Costco. This was maybe 20 bucks or something. Both sides were full, and uh, you could just put these all over the place. Put one on each machine, and then there's no excuse. You've always got these ready to go. They're relatively inexpensive considering, and um, you know, you break one, you just got another one sitting in the drawer. And of course, every tool has its own set of safety gear that you're going to want to use. Things like feather boards, push sticks. Um, there's a ton, a ton of different things. And again, we're not going to go through everything, but that's just the basic sort of personal protection that you should always think about wearing every single time you get into the shop. And uh, you know what? Don't worry about looking like a dork because I do it all the time. It may be easier for me because I grew up looking like a dork, uh, but now I look like a real dork when I wear this this and I got the eye protection on, but you know what? At the end of the day, I'm not coughing up, um, you know, sawdust. I feel pretty good. I don't feel wheezy or anything. So I highly recommend trying to protect yourself as much as possible every single day. So one thing that has helped me repeatedly uh, avoid accidents and avoid mistakes is before I approach the machine and turn it on and make my cut, I always just ask myself, is there a safer way to do this? Is there something that I didn't think of that would make this safer? Now, for instance, cutting a nice thin strip of material, it's not very thick, you know, so it's got a real good chance of lifting up back in our face. There's not much room here to work with between the blade and the fence, so you're gonna need some sort of a push stick, but it's so long, you know, this is gonna be a very awkward cut. Um, you know, so you would have to incorporate things like feather boards. You might have to use uh, these little, sorry, these little hold downs, okay, things like that. You just have to start thinking of other ways to make this happen so that it's as safe as possible. But just the act of asking yourself that question 
is there a safer way to do it, usually raises your awareness of the potential dangers. And actually, even if you don't do everything that you could possibly do, because sometimes that's unrealistic, you're still, that extra awareness sort of just makes the whole process that much safer for you. Now, another general safety recommendation is to keep everything tuned up, to keep everything sharp, and to keep everything slick. Okay, if your tools aren't sharp, first of all, you're gonna have to force the material through. It's gonna take a lot more pressure. And the more pressure you put on there, the more uh, chance there is that if you slip, the force of your hands or your body is gonna go into that cutting device. So sharp blades are an absolute must. Table saw blades, send them out to be sharpened. Probably not worth the effort for you to try to sharpen them, but make sure they stay sharp. Uh, your chisels, you know, we all have fun sharpening our chisels, but keep those things sharp. Usually the most dangerous tool in the shop is a dull tool. Okay, the other thing is resistance on these machines. This is cast iron, you know, so you can have a lot of rust buildup. It can get, you know, to the point that it's not real slick and slippery. And that's where the cleaning procedures and the wax comes in. If you keep these surfaces nice and slick, the friction is completely reduced. You don't have to worry about that. The only thing you have to worry about is the blade hitting the material because it's not the table causing any friction. So if you feel friction, it's something wrong with the cut, not with the table. That uh, comes into play a lot when you're doing a wide board on the jointer, for instance. All of that friction, once it starts to become flat, really makes it difficult to push it across. So if it's nice and waxed up, it's gonna slide across effortlessly and it's gonna be a heck of a lot safer. Now, another thing that I recommend doing involves making rules with your family. And here's my family. Um, how bad of a problem was it for us early on, the first few times it's almost like you don't even think about it when you first start woodworking and then all of a sudden a situation happens and you go, okay, we need to talk about <laughs> what the rules are because um, there were a few times mm -hmm. that you scared the crap out of me. I did, yeah. and, uh, and even one time I believe you were just bringing me a cookie yes. as a nice treat well, and I, I actually yelled. I didn't realize that uh, what you were doing and so yeah. screaming over loud tools generally doesn't work. Well, yeah, I think what happens is when, um, you know, when you've got the ear protection on, the tool is running, and you hear someone yell, yell your name. Now, I know they're probably saying my name, but initially, what do I hear? I hear, oh! <laughs> and it's like, oh, crap, someone's hurt. So my reaction is, it's just not good when they're spinning blades around. So we learned the hard way so that, that you... The, that was round one, so round, round two Round one, was... right, yeah. Round one was just barging in. Yeah. Round two was, okay, here's a compromise. Let's just maybe flicker the lights on and off. Well, My okay, idea, but until you're in a situation where in your garage you don't have much light and then the lights go on and off and you're trying to operate a power tool, yeah. again, not a great idea. So uh, what we basically figured out is, look, we have to set the ground rule. You just don't come in the shop unless it's quiet. If there's a power tool running, uh, maybe take a peek in. So, I mean, in our situation now, you can kind of peek in. Um, but it's very important to set these rules with your family if you have uh, a spouse, uh, children, aunts and uncles, whoever, parents. parents, whoever. They don't know necessarily how dangerous it is to approach you while you're at those tools. Yes. So very important rule. And especially if they come bearing cookies, you want to be nice to them. Yes. And you don't want to yell because you got scared.